oh my god, I just found out that Albert Einstein was a real person. <laughs> All this time I thought he was just a theoretical physicist. <laughs> That's so dumb, it's awesome. We're going to learn about binding energy per nucleon. And good news, the definition is actually quite straightforward. What do you do? Well, you take the binding energy and you divide it by the number of nucleons. Oops, that was a bad, uh, there we go. So what? why do we do this? That's because if you consider, we're going to be doing a graph in a second here, or in a minute, but um, when we do a graph, it really helps to scale it, because a binding energy, well, there'll be more uh, for something that's a really heavy element, but if we divide it by the number of nucleons, we sort of like scale it back so we can compare all the different uh, elements. So that's why it's a really good idea to divide it by the number of nucleons. So you could say it's the A number, and that's, remember, because if you go like this, so here it's X, and it goes A and Z. So this A is this top number right here. Or you can just call it BE over a nucleon. You'll see different versions, but it's all the same thing. So it's really, really straightforward. All you got to do is, well, for example, here they say A, binding energy for copper 63 is 551.4 mega electron volts. What's the binding energy per nucleon? It is crazy easy. You just say, I'll just write BE over uh, A, for example. Well, that's going to be equal to, in this case right here, just 551. 0.4 MeV, divide that by the number of nucleons, which in this case is 63. I'm just going to get out my good old calculator and just do that. So we'll go 551.4, divide that by 63, and I get an answer of uh, 8.75238. So I'm allowed four significant figures, so that means I'll write this answer then also to four significant figures. So that means I'll say it's, uh, let's see, I'll do 8, that's still there, and then I'll say 7, 5, and this 2 will stay there. So it'll be just 7, 5, 2, and of course that's in mega electron volts, and I'm done. So the most important thing we do with this is to plot this curve, binding energy per nucleon curve. And so we're going to say binding energy per nucleon, sure, and this is the nucleon number. So that means, for example, helium, uh, hydrogen, sorry, will be uh, 1, well, at least the A number here, the nucleon number will be 1. Helium, well, if it's an alpha particle, at least it'll be 4, and so on. So the binding energy per nucleon actually goes something like this right here. So you need to be able to draw something like that. Now, in real life, it actually has spikes. It's got a few different things. It deviates a little bit, but for the most part, it does this. So I think it's okay like this. You have to know that the peak right here, this top number right here, the highest number, it helps to know this is iron. Uh, this is 26, this is 56. There's some argument over which element should be, but iron is a good one, so that's Fe, we say it's iron. Now, uh, how do you remember the shape of this curve? This might be really, really dumb, but the way I do it, or the way I used to think of it, is I would imagine it's like a big, you know, like a big whale, for example. <laughs> it's like... I know it's really dumb, but there we go. So the whale kind of helps me at least. So there we go. So the key thing here is that reactions are going to occur naturally, so they're going to happen, you know, in nature, for example, only if you're going up in the curve. At least that's how they'll happen easily. Whoops, I don't know what happened here. So what do I mean by that? Well, that means if you're going to have something in nature, it wants to go up in this curve. Now, of course, if you're on this side, going up means you have to go to the right. Okay, so that means over here, for example, this is what we call fusion. So fusion is going to be sort of energetically favorable. It'll happen on its own with light things that make heavier things. And same way, uh, if you're going up here, for example, well, then it's going to go left. So in this sense right here, over here, we'll say fission is energetically favorable. That's when you go left, for example. So I said fusion on the left side, fission on the right side. But this, this piece right here is super important. It explains a lot actually about stars. So that's why I thought, well, let's look at this. What do stars do? Stars undergo nuclear fusion. Oh, that means they're on the left side here. And they're doing a lot of things, but one of the things they're doing in their core is converting hydrogen to helium, for example. But they're also, uh, when they're done with that, uh, we're going to learn about that in another video I'm making, uh, helium, for example, can also go to other things, and it can go to like carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and all these different things. So it's converting stuff in the core. Here's the interesting part. I think this is really cool is that a star, it depends on its mass, of course. Like, our star doesn't have enough mass, so it probably won't be that exciting for this, but our own star won't really get that heavy. It won't be able to have enough mass to have the gravity so that you can, um, so they can actually fuse heavy elements. So our star won't even get to iron. Uh, 
But some stars that have a lot of mass, they will actually reach iron. And what's really cool is this. As soon as they reach iron, what happens? Well, they can no longer fuse anything. And it turns out, what do they do? They implode. And we'll, I'll do a video where I explain that in more detail. But basically, they explode. They explode in a supernova, which is really cool. Um, and so that means then that, because uh, you might be wondering, hey, hold on, how can different elements be made? Because, I mean, uh, physicists have figured out, we think at least, how most elements have been made. Stars are the, are the factories that are making elements. They're making hydrogen to helium to carbon to nitrogen, oxygen, all the things up until iron. But what after iron? Well, it turns out after iron, uh, in order to make anything heavier than iron, you need excess energy and excess neutrons. And it turns out, well, in these explosions, that's a place where we find those things. So that's at least a cool explanation for this nucleosynthesis, you know, how stars actually make new elements.